Hello and welcome to Conscious TV. My name is Ian McNay. And today we have another program in our series on different types of meditation. And our guest is Derek Thorne. Hi, Derek. Hi. And we're going to talk about the Atma Vichara meditation that you teach and also you do a practical demonstration towards the end of this program. So, Derek, I know that you do actually run your own centre near Bath in um, Western England. And uh, people there meet regularly and they meditate with you, obviously. But let's look first of all at how you first started to meditate. Were you quite young when you first got into meditation? Well, I was um, always fascinated, compelled by the spiritual life when I was young. So uh, seeking for meaning uh, in life when I was young. And that caused me to investigate many spiritual roots and possibilities. Eventually I came quite early to become interested and fascinated uh, in yoga and prior to that in Buddhism. And central to both of those approaches is meditation. Not, ex not exclusive to those approaches, of course. Meditation is in all religions and um, uh, spiritual traditions. But I became familiar with the fact that meditation was an option, and that captivated my interest. I found it very, very fascinating. And what practical benefits did you get from meditation when you first started? Well, uh, I think that when I first started, it was, if you like, giving me uh, hope, giving me a sense that there was something behind all of these confusing thoughts that I could find. Um, and that gave me some hope, because prior to that, I suppose, um, I found myself quite stuck just in these thoughts, these ideas, this, this body, these feelings, um, all very well and good. But it's kind of, I, I missed that which I thought was behind them. And uh, when I began to meditate, I found that this gave me a real tangible sense of that which was behind the thoughts, the background of the mind, if you like. And I found that lovely and beautiful, and it's um, captivated my interest and caused me to investigate it deeply. It sounds like you began to see a bigger picture of who you were. Yes. Most of the time, uh, unfortunately, individuals are caught up in the thinking. It's sometimes quite distressing, I think, when you first point out to someone that you, you haven't got much control over your thoughts. They're just running, calculating, thinking, memories from the past, plans of the future. Uh, often these thoughts are um, uh, burdensome. And in yoga it's sometimes called the, the monkey mind, you know, the chattering monkeys. It's just jabbering away and causes a lot of distress. Now, uh, if those thoughts can be stilled to some extent, then there is a background to the mind, which through meditation you can directly experience. You know, I meet people sometimes that have this feeling, well, meditation is about having no thoughts. Mm. Would you see it that way? Um, well, we can answer that question on different levels of depth. But meditation as a process, as, as a thing you do, is definitely stilling the thoughts. So it's stillness, definitely. Um, but meditation, uh, in, in a deeper understanding, is a state. It's a naturally occurring state, which is there all the time, but which is clouded by or confused by or cluttered up by the noise, the mental noise, which goes on for people. So meditation is a process, it's something you do, and it's also a state. Is it something you do every day? You meditate every day? Um, well, for me, I've been meditating a long time. Uh, for me now, meditation is automatic and naturally spontaneous. So, but I do also sit and formally meditate regularly, but not every day. However, when you're learning to meditate, that's advisable and recommended because it takes time to train uh, the mind to be quiet. It's simply that. And there's a way of doing that that's um, common to all meditations, which is 
one-pointedness of concentration. So when you learn to meditate in the beginning, you're learning to concentrate. That's what you're learning to do. So you're using the mind more, actually, to start with, aren't you? To it sounds focus like it. and concentrate. Yeah. yeah. Well, you're using your attention. See, we have, as human beings, we have the capacity for attention. We have attentiveness, and it can go anywhere. Attention can go into the thoughts, and you can go off on all your mental journeys, or attention can go somewhere else. And you use that capacity for attention to, it's called becoming one-pointed, to focus on a single thing. Mm. And if you use your attention to focus on one single thing, to concentrate, then that brings the um, busyness of the mind into more discipline, to more uh, quietness, and it stops all of the chatter. So it's like getting the mind under control, really, isn't it, to see what's there at a more deeper, substantial level. Training, I think. I mean, the, the mind, there's nothing wrong with the, with the mind. I mean, the mind is only thoughts. We, um, in, in my uh, teaching, there is, no, there is no entity, if you like, called mind. There's just thinking. Thinking and reactions and mm. sensations and perceptions are all happening all the time. And left unrestrained, thinking will just rush away uh, with, with um, people. So it's training, meditation is training to learn, to understand that there is a background to the mind. It is quiet, it is beautiful and calm. And if you can help the habits of the mind to readjust themselves and become more focused, then the thinking slows down, then reduces in intensity, and then actually stops. So the mind is a still space. It's very beautiful. Are there common difficulties that people have that it's worth talking about briefly at this stage? Many. I mean, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I Run think. us through them then. Well, um, patience. Um, truthfully speaking, it is not immediately easy to gain some distance because because the attention is so caught up in, um, in the immediacy of thoughts and sensations and ideas, it's so caught up in that, it's quite challenging to achieve distance, to not get caught up. So when a, when a person who's never meditated before um, is asked to meditate and told to meditate and given a technique, it's not easy to see results. You may feel um, some relaxation, but you may feel frustrated that actually I can't, I can't stop. I can't stop becoming distracted. I can't stop uh, thinking. So uh, patience. In all spiritual practice, there's the only person who can achieve spiritual practice is, is you. No one can do it to you, which is a bit of a pity because most people want it to be done to them, but it can't be. So you have to encounter it yourself. The whole spiritual journey is, is personal and inner and within. So a person needs to have patience and persistence and resilience and faith in their practice. It sounds like it's the same as, to some extent, anything new you're trying, if you're trying to become a good tennis player yeah. or or any, any kind of sport, for yeah. instance, you, or learning a foreign language, you've got to make the commitment, you've got to put the time in, there'll be, there'll be ups and downs with it. Anything like that, isn't it? It's, um, if you want your body to be fit, you have to train. If you want the mind to have fitness, it has to be trained. So that takes some effort. And that's, I think, honestly speaking, what uh, perhaps people find difficult, because it's not easy to concentrate and persist and... Keep going at something, because it's not immediate. It 